Hello everyone. This is an introduction to the Svalbox Digital Database. If you hadn't guessed by the video, Svalbox is to do with the geology of Svalbard. The Svalbard has an amazing geological history and an amazing history of geologists and other scientists who have collected immense amounts of data over the decades. The Svalbox Database is essentially our effort to gather this data so it can be easily accessed and put into the context of Svalbard's unique geological history. So here we can see some of the data already imported into Svalbox. This includes regional data like cross sections or geophysics and more locally focused information from outcrops and boreholes and of course everything in between. Because of this great diversity in data we have decided that Schlumberger's software Petrel is the best platform to host the Svalbox database. Let's start off by going to one of the more studied areas of Svalbard, a place on the west coast called Festningen. So Festningen is classed as a geotope. This is because of the exceptional outcrops along the coastline here, and this even includes some well-preserved dinosaur tracks. So these coloured symbols that we can see here represent sedimentary logs that have been taken from different points along the outcrop. And what we can see here is the map updating itself every time we zoom in or out to make sure we see the appropriate level of detail for the scale that we're using. So before we look at the data itself, let's just have a quick look at what makes Fessningen so special. We can see the vertical rock bedding here. This means you can take a walk along the beach to the west and see hundreds of millions of years of the Earth's history as you walk by. A quick search on Google Scholar shows 696 results just for this outcrop. This really highlights why we're trying to get all this useful data together into one place. This here is a sedimentary log from that prominent sandstone we can see right below us. Uh, now what we can do is display this alongside other sedimentary logs from this same area. At first glance, these four logs from different parts of the outcrop seem to be quite similar, but when we look in more detail we can actually see that they cover very different intervals. The log on the right hand side is very detailed and covers about 20 metres of sandstone, while the image second from the left covers more than 2,000 metres of geology. We can independently change each log to a scale they were initially drawn for, but we can also put them all to the same scale, and this really helps highlight the different resolutions of the data, and it shows how complex geology really is in nature. For a little visualisation exercise, we can show how this sandstone log, which still contains extremely important geological information, would look in the scale of this entire outcrop log. So we've dealt with the outcrop scales at this location, but how does this all fit in regionally? Firstly, we can link the outcrops here to what we see in seismic data. This data covers several tens of kilometres, but obviously this infers geology at a much lower resolution. Secondly, we can use published cross-sections from throughout Svalbard from a variety of sources and at different scales. In this case here that we're looking at, we can see regional to semi-regional cross-sections that have been published in the Geoscience Atlas of Svalbard. When we zoom in, we can see a cross-section of the geology. We can see that the rocks are much more tilted in the west, and this helps us understand why the rocks we saw at Festningen are almost upright. We also know that this was caused by a mountain-forming event about 60 million years ago. Let's jump on our snowmobiles and head east to where the geology is a little more horizontal. Back at Fessningen, we could see huge amounts of time along a single outcrop, but quite little spatial variety in that geology. In this area, we can see big lateral changes in the geology, but over shorter timescales. To see further back in time here, we would have to go down into the ground. So that's exactly what we're going to do. This is the East Hugda Hydrocarbon Exploration Well. It was drilled in 1966, and is the deepest well bore in Svalbard at 3.3 kilometers depth. In addition to showing us the deeper geology, these well bores also collect a whole suite of physical and chemical data of the rocks they drill through. We'd not normally be able to get such data from the outcrops at the surface due to weathering and chemical alteration. On the right, we can see some of the data from such wells used in a Sanger et al. publication from 2019. So what we can do is link this subsurface well data to the subsurface seismic data. Uh, these 2D seismic lines are situated along the Rhindalen Valley to the north. As we move east along the seismic line, we can see another exploration well. This was probably drilled based on seismic data. We can see a geological structure in the data below the well, and I've interpreted it to look something like this. But what we do know is that this is a rift basin because we can see it in outcrops to the north. 
Now if we want to look at what other data is available around us, we can go back to the map view. Here we can actually see that there are a few sedimentary logs in the area that we might be interested in. We can see information about the log in its name, including the formation it covers. And we can also click on the map here to find out more detailed information about the location. As with previous examples, we can change the settings in these logs to our liking, which can be useful if we want to correlate important geological units throughout the area, or perhaps see how it has been impacted by this underlying structure we see in the seismic data. So talking of that structure, let's just go and have a look at it at the surface in Billafjorden. The Billafjorden Fault Zone is a great example of a rift basin, and Eunice leads several field courses there for both undergraduates and postgraduate students. In this section, we'll have a look at some of the work they have carried out with the use of Svalbox data. This is drone footage of Mimabukta Beach, which is just south of Pyramiden. At the bottom of the screen, you can see where students made a virtual outcrop model and combined it with structural measurements from the field in order to analyse a big fault that is actually invisible to the naked eye. Fieldwork has been hampered by the coronavirus this year, which is 2020. In the AG222 undergraduate course at Eunice, students were unable to go into the field. And while there is no real replacement to fieldwork, they were able to complete a comprehensive assignment on the Billafjorden fault zone from Svalbox data. Their assignment was to analyse all available data, to work out the geological history of the area, and to apply for a fictive drilling licence in one area where they thought finding hydrocarbons is most likely. Here we can see where a group have made surfaces in Petrel for the important formations in the basin. This is based on outcrop logs, published cross-sections, seismic and well data. The flat blue line is the sea level in the fjord. Here are a few examples of figures the students of AG222 produced for their assignment using Svalbox tools and available literature. On the left, the group have made a map of their prospect based on their geological surfaces and fault interpretation. The black symbol marks their proposed fictional well location. On the right are a north-south and east-west cross-section of a prospect from a different group. Here on the left we can see another cross-section, but this one's on a more regional scale. And on the right, the group have made a virtual well to estimate what depths they would expect to encounter each formation. And finally, this group have made a petroleum systems chart. This highlights the important past geological events of the Billafjord and Fault Zone. That concludes our mini tour of a few stops in Svalbard. But going back to the issue of scale, and what we try to do is capture the important geological information that allows us to put it all into context. In geology, it is impossible to understand the big things without understanding the small things, and it's impossible to understand the detailed things without understanding the big regional things. Perhaps the biggest scale that we're dealing with is actually the amount of data available to us. Svalbox is by no means a complete database, and at present only has a fraction of what we'd like to include. But what is important to remember is that whatever people may say, in geology at least, size matters.